radical feminists started dressing and acting like a man. It was a social experiment to learn about male privilege and toxic masculinity. This was supposed to last two years, but it ended early due to a heartbreaking revelation. In the winter of 2003, Nora Vincent, a 35-year-old journalist, began to practice passing as a man. With the help of a makeup artist, she learned to simulate stubble by snipping bits of wool and painting them on her chin. She wore her hair, already short, cut in a flat top, and bought rectangular framed glasses to accentuate the angles of her face. She weight trained to build up muscles in her chest and back. She bound her breasts with a too small sports bra and wore a jock strap stuffed with a soft prosthetic. She trained for months at the Juilliard School in New York with a vocal coach who taught her to deepen her voice and slow it down to lean back as she spoke rather than leaning in and to use her breath more efficiently. Then she ventured out to live as a man for 18 months, calling herself Ned and to chronicle the experience. To be part of the masculine society, the first thing she did was join a bowling league. Turns out she was horrible at bowling, but her teammates were encouraging and tried to help her get better. They just thought he was gay because he threw like a girl. I, I hold on, this is getting a little confusing because I keep switching genders. But when Ned is doing something, I'm going to recall Nora a him. And when Nora is doing something as herself, she's a her. Just play along. As this social experiment was progressing and she became actual friends with her teammates, she confided in one of them and revealed her secret. It did not go as planned. You know, where would this come from? This is just a regular Monday night. I was out bowling having a good time a few minutes ago. Now I'm trapped in this bizarre conversation about your name isn't Ned anymore, you know? Later, Jim told the rest of the team, who all took it well. What do you think you're expected to find in a bowling alley full of guys? I think expect to find like a bunch of guys just talking about women's private parts and a bunch of racists and you know I think kind of that's what she came into this thinking. They really showed me up as being the one who was really judgmental because they were the ones who took me in not knowing anything about me. They were the ones who made me their friend and you know no judgments attached. This was her first crack of her predetermined presumptions. Then she tried dating. She went to bars, dance clubs, even strip clubs, and tried to date women as a man. So it never gets cold where are you back in Australia? Throughout the project, Ned dabbled in the art of picking up a woman. Where'd your friend go? We went with him to this bar wearing hidden cameras. This is my friend JC, I'm Ned. Nora was reminded that in this arena, it's women who have all the power. We sit there and we, just with one word, no, we'll crush someone. And the thing is, we don't have to do the part where you cross the room and you go up to a stranger and say the first words. And those first words are so hard to say without sounding like a cheese ball or sounding like a jerk or whatever else. And yeah, what do you guys do? Nora says the brush off Barbara Jones gave Ned was typical. She was just sort of emblazoned with hostility. You know, just looked at you and you saw everything cross her face, which was Oh, God help me. Not again. I'm trying to have a drink with a friend, and I've got to deal with you. Barbara was trying to dispose of Ned before her friend returned from the bathroom. Anyway, we haven't seen each other in a while, so we're just going to head out to the office. But Ned returned and told Barbara the truth about her gender. You saying you gave us all the lines, like, try to get rid of us. I see, and as a woman, I have such sympathy. I'm like, oh, I hate being this guy that you're trying to get rid of. You're talking to a woman, Barbara seemed more open and friendly, and in the end, actually apologized for how she had treated Ned. So I'm sorry for being bitchy. She quickly found out that most women treat men like garbage, completely disposable garbage. As this experiment went on, she started hating women, and it was really wearing on her. This is especially tough because she's a lesbian, and her whole worldview is starting to crumble. She also tried to buy a car as a man, and found the experience was wildly different. But again, not as expected. As a man, the sales pitch was more about the performance and the statistics. When she went back to the same salesman later as a woman, it was a little more flirty, and it focused on her feelings about the car. She did several other things, and you can see all of this in the 2020 interview. 
not the year 2020, the ABC show 2020. I'll leave a link to that below. You should watch it because it's sad and heartwarming at the same time. As she was getting close to the end of her experiment, she has a complete breakdown. It was in part to the lying and keeping of the charade, but the main thing that broke her is how hard it is to be a man. She goes into a lot of detail about how this was frustrating, powerless, and lonely. She checked herself into a mental hospital and stayed there for quite a while. This completely broke her, and she never really recovered. She never really came to terms with her radical feminist ideas and how that didn't line up with her actual experience as a man. Unfortunately, she passed recently. She died in a clinic in Switzerland where medically assisted suicide is legal. This is sad no matter which way you look at it. But there are some lessons here. Men are not bad. It's unfortunate that she had to dress up like a man and lie to hundreds of people to find this out. And once she found out that the overwhelming majority of men are good people, it almost broke her. You can also look at this from the perspective that it's really hard to be a man. You've got loads of responsibilities and expectations. It's hard to be a man, even if you are a man. But it's impossible to be a man if you're a woman. Our brains work differently. She didn't alter her body to become a man. She didn't load herself up with hormones that reprogrammed her brain. She just put on different clothes and lowered her voice. It nearly destroyed her.